On the left is a commercial joystick, and on the right is the joystick i3 printed. These are going to share a lot of similarities because they pretty much reverse engineered or just copied in a smaller version of what you see on the left. And instead of using micro switches, I actually use tactile switches, the larger kind. You can see the 3D printed joystick in action from a bottom view. So let's look at a Suzo Hap competition joystick. When you purchase them, they come with an assembly diagram so you know how to put them together. The basic components are the hub, spring, Z-stop, switch bracket, micro switches, shaft, and actuator. And we're gonna replicate all those parts. To give you an idea, there's a spring captured inside and this is what helps the joystick return to the neutral position. After a lot of trial and error, here are the parts that I came up with, with starting with the the knob, the Z-stop, the actuator hub, a micro switch mount, and the restrictor plate. Here's a basic assembly of what they all look together. There's really nothing fancy going on here. I just make 3D models and I have to show you because they look cool. What you didn't see is all the 3D printing I had to do and then revise 3D print, revise 3D print. But in the end, you'll get a bunch of parts some better than others. I'll only show you the good parts. But then you can build this joystick, which feels pretty all right, all, all things considered. Here's all the parts laid out to assemble this joystick. And to start, the key is a M5 bolt by 80 millimeters long. This one's partially threaded, doesn't have to be, but it makes things a little bit easier. We're gonna put the joystick knob on first. This knob can be this version, or this is one thing you can vary for whatever feel you're looking for. Next, we're gonna put some aluminum spacers on. They don't have to be these spacers. You could 3D print this part to whatever length you need. I just had four that did the job. Next, it's gonna go onto the hub. And you look inside the hub, we have a little raised portion and that's gonna help capture our spring. This spring you can find anywhere. Lots of home improvement stores have miscellaneous spring sets that you can use for whatever application. Next, we're gonna capture the other side of the spring with our Z-stop. So one end's gonna go down. And then we have another portion, and this is actually gonna interfere with the restrictor plate, which I'll talk about a little bit later, as far as variations to that. So here's our restrictor plate recess, so it's gonna capture and find its way, and hopefully line up the holes on the joystick hub. The top of the joystick hub has countersunk areas that were printed, and we're gonna put number four by 40 by one and one half length bolts into this. So I'm gonna put one in, and I'll do the other one. Lastly, we're gonna put the micro switch mount or the switch mount plate. Here I have the switches already glued, and these are just 12 by 12 millimeter switches. So here's what it looks like when they're not glued. It's best to assemble this, glue them first, and try to center these as best you can. So that's the assembly of the body. So we'll put nuts on those to keep everything together. Remember there's a spring in compression in here and that spring is what helps the joystick return back to zero or neutral position. The size of that spring and the, the force to compress it will, will change a lot how this joystick feels as well. So that's something to keep in mind. You can always cut the spring in half or double two springs into themselves, whatever suits your fancy. So ideally you'd put these two other bolts in, but to continue with to continue with assembly, the last thing we need to do is put the actuator in. This is another thing I played around with, and this depends on the distance that your switches are mounted from the center, so you could have them come out a little bit further, and the actual like dead zone you want to have in your joystick. So here's like a bullet style I did and here's an acorn style. And what that does is it reduces the distance traveled before a switch is actuated. That actuator is gonna go in between everything and to secure everything off, this is a M5 locking nut. And that's the joystick.
I mentioned a bunch about the restrictor plate and what it does to the arcade. This 3D model will give you a little bit better idea than what I can explain without a visual aid. So on the left we have a four-way restrictor plate. And you can see as you move the joystick from the top, the restrictor plate only lets it travel in certain paths. So up, down, left, right. Very very precise, where this circular restrictor plate gives you a full range of motion with four digital switches that gives you what they call eight-way. Another thing you can do is not only vary the restrictor plate, which you can see back and forth right here, but also the distance that the micro switches are mounted. The further away the micro switches are, the less or more travel it takes to actuate a button or a command. Now we're going to wire all this it's real basic, these are just buttons. We'll daisy chain ground, and then wire the up, down, left, right. I drilled some holes in the side just to give some strain relief for these wires. Next, I'm just gonna establish my reference and then label what those buttons are on the reverse. To wire this thing, I'm gonna wire to a PlayStation 1 and I'm gonna use an old DDR pad. This is the Konami pad that I had briefly talked about in one of my previous videos. We're just wiring the directions up, down, left, right, start, select, X, and circle, and blobbing some hot glue so these wires don't move. Next, I'm going to put it in a box, reassemble the joystick, and mount this PCB in whatever way that works. And then you can see it in action. So the joystick feels all right. It's, it's nothing great. Keep in mind, we 3D printed this. It's a little rough, and that's due to the spring really not being the right tension for this. And the surface of the 3D print, it was kind of rough, so you can kind of feel that plastic on plastic touching each other, and it's not a smooth plastic since I use a pretty thick layer height because the overall print time for all these parts is around the two hour range. I'd say it's more like two hours, 20 minutes when you account for printing between parts, cool down, and you know, resetting, restarting the 3D printer. Is this method viable? Uh, probably not, since if you just buy one commercial joystick, it's only around $15 for a Suzo hat. The Sanwa's are more around $24, $26. But the point still stands, this became a challenge of is it really that hard? And after a day, it's it's not that hard. Now, I, yeah, I know not everybody has a 3D printer, but this is more about the exploration of can something be done, how is something done, and hopefully it gives you the confidence to, you know, try this on your own. So this does give you a smaller size joystick, about by 50% smaller, that can be used in multiple applications. And not only that, this is highly customizable. So again, with the restrictor plate, four-way, eight-way, octagon, whatever you want, you can also change the knob of the joystick as well as the length of the shaft and the distance and type of micro switches you're using. So hopefully that was interesting for you guys. I enjoyed making it. And if you want, just keep watching me play Pac-Man using a joystick sideways. It's, it's not fun to watch just because this is only level one.